God Calls Samuel. Samuel was a 12-year-old boy who lived in the temple with a priest named Eli and learned about God. Eli took care of Samuel, and Samuel helped take care of Eli because Eli was almost blind. One night, something special happened. As Samuel slept in the temple, he heard a voice call out, Samuel! Samuel thought it was Eli calling, so he jumped up from his bed. Here I am, Samuel answered as he ran to Eli. I'm here because you called me. But Eli shook his head. I didn't call you. Go back to your bed. Samuel did as he was told and fell asleep quickly. A little while later, the voice called again. Samuel! This time, Samuel was more tired and crawled out of his bed more slowly. In Eli's room, Samuel rubbed his eyes, scratched his tummy, and said with a yawn, I'm here because you called me. Eli was getting tired of Samuel coming into his room and said more firmly, I didn't call you, now please go back to bed. When this happened a third time, Eli thought to himself, Aha, it must be God who's calling Samuel. Eli told Samuel, who was now very confused and sleepy, If you are called again, just say, God, I hear you and I'll do whatever you want. When the voice called again, Samuel did as Eli told him. It was God, and God had many things to say to Samuel. Even though he was only 12, Samuel wanted to serve God. With God's help, Samuel grew up to share many messages from God. People all over Israel knew Samuel as God's trusted prophet. Good morning. Thank you, Emily, so much for reading that for us. So we just heard a call story about Samuel, and Pastor Sandy is going to read about Jesus calling the disciples in a little bit. We have so many call stories in the Bible that help us learn. They help us learn that God calls us, and they give us an insight into what it means to answer God's call. One way we can think about it that is that we live into our vocation. For some of us, that might be a new word, so let me define it. Vocation is a divine call to God's service. And as I learned it in my uh, college classes, another way to think about, about it is where your gifts meet the world's needs. So close your eyes for a second. And think about what you really, really, really enjoy doing. What do you do that you lose track of time? Keep thinking, is it talking with friends? Is it making some sort of art? Is it singing or playing an instrument? Is it being outdoors? Is it reading, writing, playing with animals? Maybe it's more than just one. So open your eyes. I'm glad you took time to think about those. Now, I want you to think about the needs of the world and the people around you. So you can close your eyes again if you need to. So think about these questions I'm going to ask you. Is there someone around you? Maybe it's not physically, it could be on school, um, Zoom, or in person. Is there someone around you that feels lonely and needs someone to talk to? Is there trash to pick up on your favorite trail or maintenance that needs to be done? Are you inspired to play or sing a song, or to create some piece of artwork and give it to someone? Does someone near you need a friend? What are the needs of the world and people around you? So where those two things meet, where your gifts and the needs of the world, where they meet, that's called living out your vocation. That's God's call. So I want us to think of an example we saw last week. At the inauguration of President Joe Biden and Madam Vice President Kamala Harris, Amanda Gorman made history because she was the youngest poet to read at an inauguration. That's what history will say about her. But I want us to take a moment and think about her vocation she showed us last week. 
Amanda Gorman has a way of writing that inspires others who have felt discouraged. So her gift is writing because she enjoys it so much and she's very good at it. And the need is for people to be inspired and encouraged. So those two came together last week and made history. Okay, but a vocation, I wanna make this really clear. A vocation is not just a one-time deal, like an inauguration day. It is lifelong. So Amanda Gorman was writing and inspiring before last week and she'll continue to do it after. That's what a vocation is, it's lifelong. The same is true for you and for me about our vocations. They are lifelong and we are called to live into our vocations and to keep doing them because there are needs in the world that only you, that only I can do. The gifts you share with the needs of the world make history. No doubt about it. Your vocation and how you answer God's call, that is important. You are important. So I want you to take some time this week and pay attention to what you really enjoy doing that answers God's call to love God, to love others, and to love the world that God created. That is your vocation. Then do it more. Blessings on the journey.